Hello, welcome to the course, and uh, good afternoon, or good morning, I don't know, um, maybe good night. Today, we talk about uh, you continue our course, fee boundary constant mean coverage hypersurface. Remember that I, I talk with you about the, this problem, especially in the ball, okay, right? So, and uh, remember this mini course, I will talk about the, in the first class, I remember some fact here very fast, okay? And uh, in the first class I did, I talk with you about some classic result in different geometry. This is very important for us because after I did this, especially for students, um, I, I have some background about this problem. And then I, I introduced the problem about fee boundary problem. Okay. Yesterday, I talked with you about fee boundary, same C and minimal. Um, hyper surface, surface, but this problem in the ball. Okay. And, uh, we'll talk uh, more about uh, gap results yesterday. I did this and I talked with you, talked. And, uh, today, what I do? I do, uh, I talk with you about stability in the context of fee boundary, mini, uh, semi C, hyper surface and the surface in the ball. Okay. And uh, tomorrow I talk a little about the other talks, right? So I forget to say that it is important. And uh, if you have any question or, or my letter is not big in the, in the back, in the um, blackboard, let me see, let me know because this is important for me, okay? Because when I'm right here, I, I, in the time, I don't, I don't see what you're writing here, okay? So let's move on. Um, here, only the planning that you will talk with you. I, I like to, to give this brief introduction because if there any anybody um, a little, um, how do you say, uh, if you if you have anybody that is begin now, you remember this fact. So it's important for to understand what I did, what I I will do, right? So in this lecture, I will talk about fee bundle, same C, hyper surface and surface uh, in the ball. Specifically, I will talk with you about uh, stability. Okay. I remember that I began this topic in the class in yesterday. I began this, but, he, but today I will talk with you better. So I, I think that important to say that today, if you, if you like, for example, some PDEs, I will, I will use this a little to prove some results, okay? But if you don't like, I think that's important to begin to like because it's very important for us. <laughs> okay, let's begin. And uh, let's go. So in this lecture, I begin with an uh, introduction. After that, I show for you some results. And then I finally, I present for you a little reference because this, this topic is very rich. So you have some main reference, some main result that of course I can't to, to show for you only in this class, okay? Let's move on. Remember that what, uh, what we study at the moment. At the moment we study about fee boundary problems in the ball. So what I want? I want to classify some uh, hypersurface, surface, with so some condition yesterday I, I provide for you some results about the uh, gap results and we classify some of this, this fee boundary, this surface, hypersurface with some condition, you have some gaps. Remember that you have that you have here, and uh, I talk with you in the, the second lecture about that, but I think that don't write in this way. This means that if you have a hypersurface in the in the Euclidean ball here, 
In this time, I, I write when I talk about the ball, I think the ball in the creative space, right? So remember that if you have a sigma minimal, okay, it's uh, not difficult to show that it's the same that it shows that the um, as the functions, um, the function as as are harmonic functions. So coordinate functions, sorry. And uh, if you have that uh, this surface or hypersurface, sorry, is a phi boundary, you have that in me orthogonal the boundary of the ball, and it's the same that to to write this this condition here. This uh, I think that is a good exercise for the student to do this. Okay, so what does mean? Does mean that you have here. You can see study to to the problem with phi boundary hypersoft in the ball, in the ball phi boundary in the ball minimal. Okay, it's the same that you study this. Look at that. Here I put. I don't know if we, if you can see well, but here I put one here and the uh, red color. Why this? I put this. Okay, of course this one one. But why I in this moment here I put this because this important way I introduce you other problem I I remember you about that and you remember this because this is important for us. But today I, I don't speak about this because there are some things that I will I will um, talk with you tomorrow. I promise that I will talk with you about that. Okay, so. In this image here that I show for you some many times, this image you have here a ball and you have here a disk, equatorial disk. Remember that, okay? Well, I think that this, uh, I know that I showed for you yesterday and uh, in yesterday I showed for you this, this slide, but I think that important to remember that because important for us, and they uh, uh, talk about the first variation of volume. Remember, you have a surface, and then you have a variation of the, the surface, or hype surface, and then you can calculate the first variation of the, the, the variation of the volume. And uh, you show that this expression here, and uh, show, and you want to see here, only to remember that. We see here that if you have a critical point to have that, for example, um, you can say that the, the hypersurface minimal, if it, it, the, it, the hypersurface meet the boundary orthogon, okay? And the same way, if you have the hypersurface has same C, okay, you have that the volume is preserved and intersect the ball orthogonal. Remember that, okay? Only they remember. Okay, next, what I want? I want to calculate in this, I use it yesterday to motivate uh, to study phi boundary, but I want to calculate to the second variation, okay? Why? Remember in the first class when I, uh, when I begin in the classical result about Barbosa do Carmo results, when I, talk with you about uh, stability, we need to calculate the second, va second variation, okay? Because you have stability, you have that, the second variation is big or equal to zero, remember? So in this way, you have it only to remember that another characterization you can, this I put here, in the case of surface in the ball, phi boundary in the surface in the ball minimal, but you can write the same way if you have, for example, um, submanifolds, okay? And uh, this, this theorem shows for me that if you have a phi boundary minimum surface, that's me, that uh, the mean curvature is equal to zero and, uh, and the surface meets the, the sphere orthogonal, and you have that sigma is a critical point, and you can see that the function coordinates satisfy this system. Okay, 
If you if you want more information about that, I think it is important. If you like this talk, I think that is important to see in this paper here, written by Lee. Okay, this paper is very good because this paper has um, recent events in open problem. This very very good to read and uh, especially you have this term. Okay, this is not mine. Okay, let's move on. Now I, I present for you the second variation. Remember what am I what what I want? I want to classify some hypersolve fee boundary, same C hypersolve fee boundary, but this hypersolve has are established. Okay, so to do this, we, we need to remember about the second variation of area. The second variation of area is, is given by this expression. And uh, this is um, a big calculation, but don't be afraid if you never see this. I will show for you a little more, more simple that this. Okay, now it's important to say here and uh, about uh, this operator here. This operator is called the Jacob operator. And uh, when I study the problem with, for example, Barbosa and Carmo, and I, I, I talk with you about this, you don't have this integrated here about the boundary. Because in this case, Barbosa and Carmo theorem, you don't have a boundary, okay? So now you have a boundary, then you have to calculate this, this thing, okay? So I, I don't want you, of course, that you remember all this, but I, when I need this, I put in the blackboard, okay, to do some calculation. Yes. Any question at the moment? No? If it has any question, comments, please. I open your microphone and said what you, any question, comments, don't worry about this. Okay, let's begin. So what's this for me? This, remember, when I write here uh, the letter Q, one minute, oh, sorry, all time I did this, sorry, sorry, one minute. Okay. Move on, one minute. Sorry for my mistake. When we talk about this only for information, of course, you have here when, when you calculate the second variation of the, the volume, you have here a, a form quadratic, symmetric. Okay, this is important for us. So let's move on. Now I talk for you about uh, what's my problem first to do this. I remember for you some facts that I talked with you yesterday that is important for us. And especially, I did one question for you. I hope that you think about that. So yesterday, I remember that. One minute. I use some... I like to, to introduce this problem with the, the picture. So you have imagine you have it here a ball. I put here a ball. Okay. So you have here a core normal vector. Is the same that vector position. And then the boundary you have that this orthogonal. Okay. I remember that yesterday I did I proposed one exercise for you. If my letter is not good, you say, Maria, your letter is, is small. So if you write not good, tell me, please. So yesterday I did one, I did a proposal exercise for you. This is exercise important, not only yesterday, but today is very important. What this what this exercise? Suppose that you have a mesh. Not few boundary, okay. You don't need this in this exercise, and uh, you have your orientation any 
is the normal vector. Remember? And uh, you define this. I don't know if you remember. Okay, if you don't remember, I will remember for you. Don't you worry about that. And I did for you, I propose for you, show that the divergent with this is the same that <coughs> um, right. Sorry. I mean it's and yeah. Actually, sorry. I will clean this because I ring I write it wrong. One minute. I don't have a to put my my clean. So this is the same that here. Remember? Okay. Why this exercise is important? Yesterday, this don't need that you have the free boundary condition, okay? Remember, in, in particular, if you have n equal to two, you have a, use this. Um, who is u, sorry? U is the function, okay? And uh, what you can do more? You can do the following. Imagine you have that sigma has a boundary. So in this case here, what I can do? If you integrate this, in this case here, suppose that sigma is phi boundary in the bone. Okay. Then what more? You can see this is the same that this I forget the element of the area. Okay, so if you have boundary, is the same that you write uh, my function and call normal. So you can see here, you can see here that it's the same. Remember that, what this? This is x minus function support, normal vector, and co normal is the same that I will put this expression only to see better, okay? And uh, remember, if you have p bound condition, you have that the normal con vector the normal vector is orthogonal to the normal vector, the boundary. Okay, right? So you have this, this, this is zero. So you have that is the same that. And uh, what this? This in the boundary, in the boundary, this is the same that, the same vector, okay? So the color now has length one, in this case here, what you have, I proved this again, because if you, somebody lost the class yesterday, you can see that this, it is very important for the class today. So in this time here, the right, you have that, this, and uh, you have more, you can show, you can see that. What this mean, this mean that, the length of boundary is right the same that this expression. Okay? So yesterday, I remember, I think that, I asked you what condition you can hear to this expression is bigger or equal to zero. Okay? In particular, what you have here? In particular, you have a mark. If the, the hypersolve is minimal, you have that length of boundary 
is equal and the area of sigma, right? And uh, another important consequence, if you have in the case of surface, then you have, remember that because we, I will use this, you have that, this expression. In the case of minimum, right? It's clear? Don't it has, has any problem? No? Okay. Now, remember that, what I want? I want this moment to, how, how condition, the first question, how condition you can put here to guarantee that this expression here is bigger or equal to zero? So if you have this, what does mean? Does mean that the length of boundary is bigger or equal to n, the area of sigma, right? So now I will talk about that. And uh, if you have that condition that uh, you want, I will classify this, this hypersurface surface, right? So in the brief introduction that I, I did now, I begin, in fact, my, my, my lecture. So in this, this, this time here, consider sigma, sigma, you have a immersion in this domain, in the Euclidean tree space, okay? And uh, you say that now I will, I will define the what is stable. I said this in the first class, but now I have here and the boundary, the boundary, okay? So you say that sigma is stable, see the second variation of the area is big as big or equal to zero for all um, volume variation. What's that mean? That mean that the, this expression Q that you see before, when you apply this, okay? This is the same that this expression, sorry. If you write something not clear, okay? And uh, you can ask me, please. Now I put this. <laughs> Sometimes I don't put it, but now I put. But not only this. You need this, this condition. Remember, in the case of Barbosa and do Carmo, uh, you have the same time. What this condition said for me? This condition said for me that dur during the variation, the volume is preserved. Okay, right? So you have this. And uh, I, you ask, you can ask me, but uh, sorry, it don't work, I don't know. It doesn't work. Let's go to work, please. Okay. Okay. And uh, you have this expression here. This expression a little complicated, but it's the same because here you have that the reach is the critical reach is zero. So you have to simplify that. So you can write the same expression here using, use, for example, integrable parts, you can you write the same expression and uh, in the same way that you have in, in, the, in the slides, okay? Let's continue. What I want? Yesterday, the, this, this definition is clear. There is some problem about this definition. Not, okay, let's move on. Yesterday, when I talk with you, in the lecture, I talk with you about it. I put these this results and I said for you, tomorrow I will, I will talk in, um, better about this. So, Rosa Vergasta study compact, stable, semi C hype surface with free boundary in the ball. In fact, they study a lot more things, but I only put this because I think this is important here. And they prove that if you have a the ball, the equilibrium close the ball in the equilibrium tree space, 
and they prove that if sigma is a, a, a CMC, compact, stable, orientable, uh, with the boundary in the ball, then what they prove? They prove that the, the boundary is embedded and the, there is only the three possibilities to classify this surface. The first one is sigma is a total geodesic disk. The other is sigma is a spherical cap. And uh, the last is sigma has genus one with at most two boundary components. Okay, I said yesterday this, but now I can explain better. The question is in this moment, not my question, okay, but uh, the question can I reproduce here is I can I can remove I can remove the this three okay let me see this this sigma has gen one why this question this question is because in the paper Rosvergas I don't have example about that so you classify that but don't show example so this is natural to ask if you can remove that right so to to answer this 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 question, uh, Ivaldo Nunes from Universidade Federal do Maranhão, do Maranhão, sorry, in Brazil, answer this question. And uh, what they prove? They prove that if you see if you have the ball, if you have the ball in the credulity space, and you have the sigma in mesh in the this ball, a fee boundary, same as C compact, orientable, stable, stable, okay, right? Stable, this is very important. Then what they prove? They prove that sigma has genome zero. I don't know if you remember in the first class when I introduced the, the mini course, we talk with you about some, some topology, some geometry, some relations. To prove this result, you need all the things, okay, right? So. I will explain a little more this problem and after you prove that, right? In particular, what what's you can do? In particular, the Nunes together com, with the results Rosvergas and uh, they give all was complete classification of mass compact, stable, semi-C, so if we bound the closed balls, right? In these results by Nunes, they, they said, the follow results said, the total mobility disk are the only mass or a table, contable, compact, sorry, a stable, semi c sofa with fee bound in the ball. So you have here uh, rigid results, classification results. You have this hypothesis, you don't know this classify. Okay? So, uh, I will prove that, my, but uh, I will talk a little more about you. And I ask you now if there is any question here, if not clear what the idea, please let me know. <clears throat> so, to prove these results, and Nunes provided this, this theorem is more general, and uh, this result here. Uh, you have in particular the first one that I ask you about the result Rosvergast. Uh, okay, so here you have I I put this, but I you I you um, talk a little about all information that is in this term, right? So suppose that you have the omega a subset of the Euclidean tree space. Smooth, compact, convex domain. What does that mean, convex domain? Convex domain means that the second, second fundamental form, the boundary, is bigger than zero, right? Is this, uh, for example, if you have a ball. Okay. And uh, suppose that the second variation of, this, of the boundary satisfies this pitch condition here. Right, where k is, is a number bigger than zero, and uh, h is the indu induced metric on the boundary. Now you have 
if sigma is a uh, mass orientable compact stable, same as C so for if if boundary, then what they prove? They prove that sigma has gen genus zero and uh, the boundary has at most two components. So in this case here, if you prove that, you prove the first result about nones, and you prove the, the you can remove the the eight tree and the results about Rose Vergas, right? So you can prove these results, but now I need to some results to prove that. Let's move on. <clears throat> the first one is the whole proposition. So I will, I think that important. Um, I will write here because it is small. So I begin here, one minute. I, I will explain this pr proposition. This, this, this proposition in fact is, I think that for me, this proposition in fact the heart of the te theorem, okay? What's this proposition say? This proposition says the same hypothesis that the theorem, so, um, he said the following. If you have your omega be a compact domain in the Euclidean tree space, and if you have sigma in mass in this domain, and suppose that sigma is stable, same as C, so face with Fib boundary, then what they prove? They prove that this is bigger than zero. But you can ask him, sorry, all the time I, I put this, sorry. <clears throat> but you can ask me about it. what's the difference different about this expression that has a here in the proposition and this expression that here's in the in this in the blackboard. Look for that. In the blackboard, you, if you have that this surface is stable, you need that this condition. So in this proposition have if we have that the surface is stable and the, the function here is zero on the boundary, you have, ah, sorry, you have that this, you don't need this more, okay? This is, this is important for us, right? One minute, I wrong it again. So this is the idea. Let's go to prove that. Is clear? Any question about this problem? If you have any question, let me see. Okay. Bye. Don't forget this, right? I proved, but uh, yesterday, but I proved to today because it's important. But I, if you need, I prove it again. But I think that uh, is surface. So let's let is let is prove the proposition. The proof. Known is. Right. And uh, what you have here, we ha you have that sigma. Sigma in the domain, the creature tree space. Remember that is convex. Right, same C, P boundary, compact, orientable. Right, I put it out, of course, um, stable. What I, I can prove that this. Expression is bigger than zero, bigger or equal to zero, for all uh, phi on the bond. Right? So let's begin. What's the idea here? The idea here 
you consider orthonormal base in the equilibrium space. Remember, if you have a surface lived here, the orientable you have the normal, the vector normal, okay? And you consider this function. <clears throat> you can ask him, why this function, okay? And uh, if you see this vector living in the equilibrium tree space, so you can write this vector in each point, like a combination with the autonomous base, right? So there you have that A after you can calculate here with, uh, with A. So you have that this expression, okay? Only the, the, the calculation, only that. So why this function is part? This one is part because in part because this I exercise. I think that in part is special for we students to do this. If you calculate that, the Jacobian is a zero. Remember what the Jacobian? I operate Jacobian. I said for you, and uh, this is Laplace in these cases because you don't have heat here. Okay. I don't know if I put it J or I, I think that, sorry. I found, I think that I put it L. Sorry for my mistake. So why this important? This is important for us because remember, and uh, remember. Remember that if you have the second variation, and calculate this um, the form quadratic. You can prove that. You can write this way, right? Plus it's the same that you have here in the blackboard. Here, only you have okay, only you have to calculate integrate by parts. Only that. So in this case, if you have calculate here, for example, um, sorry, here in this case you have it, um, the second, are you pin here? One minute. So if you have here, Q calculate and uh, in this function, what's happened? What's happened that when you calculate here, plus you only calculate that. If you don't uh, um, see well, let me see. Let me know, please. And uh, this equal to zero. Why this equal to zero? Because this function satisfies this equation. So what's happy here? I you need to clean this dot. <clears throat> In this case here, what my claim? My claim that um I you will see that this information here is, is less than zero. Okay, so you have here Q, Q is given by this expression here in the boundary. I forgot. Right? But this expression here can be white in the same way. Look at that. If, if I'm wrong, you said it. 
I can write in the same in this way. Right? So in this case here, uh, I don't put this, but you can now do this calculation. If you have this calculation, and uh, you have here, in this case, this calculation, right? Right? Now, what I can do? I can do that, remember, this equal the norm of, of uh, vector, norm, vector norm, normal, this equal to one, and uh, this equal to one, two. Why? Because you have that, okay? So this is zero, and uh, this, the same that this is pressure. Okay? What does mean this expression? Remember, by, by hypothesis, you have that this, this set is a dom domain convex. What does mean? Does mean that the second, the second fundamental form is a um, negative. In this case, he, sorry, negative, no, positive, and uh, you have minus here, this is negative, okay? What can do, what does mean that? Does mean that there is uh, I in this set, so that this is negative. Right? <clears throat> so this information is good for us. And uh, now uh, consider the first uh, in particular, what you have here, we have here in particular that. Uh, this is no zero, right? Why this is no zero? Because if this is equal to zero, um, the surface is um, stable. So if you have a function test and the surface is stable, this don't have this, they have that bigger that equal to zero. Right, so you, you have this information. Okay, <clears throat> so consider the first edge val value of the operator L so that the function um, I put here and so that this function is zero on the boundary. You can consider that. And uh, what more you can consider? We can, with this information and that information, you have that view is different for U, U, I, okay? Why this happen? <coughs> and uh, this happen because if you have this condition and this condition, you have a contradiction if the, the is stable. So moreover, you can consider this, this integral of the surface with the function V is the same after normalization, you can show this is the same. So if you have that, you can see here, the same that V minus V, this expression is equal one equal to zero. What does mean? Remember, this, now this function here satisfies the condition about it. you have that 
when you have the the this this integral is equal to zero, so use that the surface is um is a uh, stable. You can see that in this case, I'll put here. You can see here. I think not. Né? I think not. I'll delete this. I will write here very big because I think that I don't write big. You can see well, right? One minute to do this. And uh, this show for, for me that when you calculate this expression, because sigma is stable, this satisfies that. I remember that this uh, symmetric, symmetric in quadratic form, so this satisfies this. M minus I, UI, UI. What does mean? And, uh, and uh, what I can do? This expression here, is zero. Why this expression here is zero? Because this view, I take that the first eight value of L and the V view is zero in the bounder. This is zero. And uh, this expression here is zero too. Why this is zero too? Because you have, uh, you can write it in this way. Remember this, Definition about this operator. A minute to write that. <clears throat> right. In this case, this is zero. And the uh, V view is zero on the bottom. So this is zero. So um, in the first part here, I prove that this is satisfy this condition. So you have that is, is negative. So you have provided the, the exercise. Exercise not in the proposition, right? So I finished the, 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 the proof and uh, I work with uh, the, the same idea, you can prove more. But in, in this moment, I think that is sufficient to, to, to this proof, right? Let's move on. Is there some question here? Okay. This, uh, remember this, this proposition is very important for us when I prove the, the known results, right? Today, only uh, on. Um, only on a remark. Today, I think I, I, I will do some many calculation, especially for the students, because when you said this, this information is very, very, um, how do you say this result for me, this result is very beautiful. So you can, I think that important to do some calculation, especially for to, to study, study and uh, to see how do you prove these results, right? So, I will begin the next result. And uh, I, in this proposition, let me so I only remember that I proved that. Remember that, okay? So I need this to prove the next result. Now, I will prove the, the, the result by, by Nunes. And uh, what's the result said by Nunes? If you have, remember, I proved that this proposition, then I will prove this result that you can conclude that I can remove the, the 83 in the result by Rosenberghast, right? So suppose that you have the omega is a small compact convex domain. Suppose that the second fundamental form of, of in the boundary of omega satisfies this gap here. I only speak again. And uh, suppose that sigma is an immense table, compact, stable 
in this same C surface with phi boundary. Then what I can prove? I can prove that my claim is that sigma has zero, zero, and uh, the boundary has at most two components. So you have here a beautiful results because you have a classify some you have here results about you involve topology, geometry, variation. So I think that is beautiful result. So let's begin to, to do this, prove these results. Um, is there any question here? No? Okay. One minute to clean the blackboard, right? If you have any question, let me know. One minute. Okay, let's continue. So I put that because I don't need that. Let's continue here. I will do some calculation with you. Oh my God, I don't clean well. <clears throat> I put here the idea and uh, what the idea? The idea here is use all that, all that you know and uh, understand and, and you study with me in this last class. For example, we study about theorem about a, a gauss bonnet theorem, you use this in this proof and uh, use all the things that you study yesterday. I you pitch? I you do some pitch here only to understand the problem, and after I can write all the calculation, right? So suppose that you have here a surface. One minute to to draw. Sorry for my picture. You have here some zeros. And uh, you have here some components on the boundary. When I talk, genus, I represent with the letter and bundle of components, I represent with the letter R. And there is a result that if you have this surface, you can, you can see you, there is an application that leave this surface here in the equilibrium disk where the disk is a subset of a Euclidean to space. And uh, usually, and uh, you can see this object is the same that like a uh, capital sphere, hemisphere, okay, it's the same. So moreover, this application here has degree uh, less or equal limited by the genus plus the number of components in the boundary, right? This is part for us. What I can do this, and uh, now I begin to write for you, GABA, GABA, and uh, Alphonse show that there is this application here, in particular, if you have this application by results by Yao, you can suppose that if this application by result by Yao, you can suppose that this function here is equal to zero, where EI is one or two, right? If you have here this function by result Yao, what do you remember? Do you remember that sigma is stable, right? If sigma is stable, what do you remember? Do you remember that the Q, this expression, is equal what this expression, remember? Ah. 
I put here. Do you see here or not? If you don't see here, let me know, right? If you don't see here, please let me know. This is a second variation of the area. And uh, you have this condition. You have that the second variation of the area or the um, deform quadratic. What does mean? Does mean that is satisfy this, right? Where here, I, sorry, one or two. Moreover, when you have this result here, you can suppose that, remember, you have the surface. So you have this application, you can see here in the disk and you can see the disk, remember the disk here is a set in this, in the creditor, in the two accreditor space, so that satisfies that, okay, right? And uh, if you have this condition here, you can suppose that the this component, this uh, uh, you have uh, one, two, three components is zero on boundary. But remember, in the few minutes I I prove for you, if you have a function, right? And uh, in the function is equal to zero in the boundary. What I proved? I proved that the second, this application, what's this satisfies? Satisfies that. These are results, proposition that I proved. Right? Okay? So you can see that you have here, and uh, you have here I maybe one or two, right? Now you can do this sum, okay? And uh, you have that, if you sum that, this expression, what I can do here, I can do that. You have a one minute. Minus don't need that. What more? Minus <clears throat> right. So you can see here in the same way that remember this equal to one when you sum that and this equal to one. So you have that, this, if you, if you want, you can see that uh, you write in the other form, in the boundary plus you have here only to change the signal, you change that, and uh, you put this, and uh, you have that, right? So what more can see here? Remember, when I begin the explanation, I said that this, this application here, degree, have degree, satisfy this. So when you, you, when you see this application here, because these are conformal application, you have that is equal to pro, for pi and the degree of application, right? Okay, but now you have a new application, you, never, you need to calculate about this information about that. Do you remember about uh, anything about that? I think that. Yesterday, when I talked with you, 
Remember, there's the equation about that. If you have minimal surface, you have that. These are by, by Gauss equation. So in this case here, you have a minimal, sorry, minimal, no, you have the main curvature and then they have a Gaussian curvature, right? But you remember too, the gauss bonnet theorem satisfies that. Remember? And uh, in the case you have that, the only characteristic satisfies that, right? And uh, what more? More, I will put this expression here after I will put this expression here and I together all the things, right? So what I can do here, put this expression, a minute to write, this expression equal here plus, sorry, because I did the calculation, I'm not very fast. And uh, this satisfies that, right? So you have that, the Gaussian curvature here, and I use that. So you have that. You can see that, remember, look for this, this expression here. You can see this uh, J plus um, this is pressure, but in now in this situation here, two, and uh, you you need to 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 do two here, so you have four. Sorry, two minus two G minus R. Okay. And uh, what more you can hear? What more I can hear? One minute. Um, minus the geodesic curvature on the boundary, right? Okay. Right. We can see here. Let's go to simplify something here. Here. Okay. In this expression here. What I can simplify, help me. This expression is the same that four pi, this expression two minus G, right? Plus, plus enough minus this integral. Okay, let's move on. And uh, by Okay, help me if I if I see something wrong here, help me. So what I prove at the moment, at the moment I prove that this expression plus the integral, the mean coverture square and uh, plus two integral of Geodesic curvature satisfy that. Right? But by hypothesis, what you have here, by hypothesis, you have this condition here. What does mean? That means that, in particular, that you have that the the Geodesic curvature, because this uh, condition, if you have a vector, satisfy that condition, right? And uh, this is bigger than K. I think that K, letter K, right? So you can write the same one minute. 
you can write this in the say in this in the following. You have here, now you have it. K plus two K, three K, right? So you have that, um, this expression plus um, three K length of the boundary and uh, this, Right? Is clear for these this results or not? If not clear, let me know because these are very important. What's I, 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 I claim? I claim that G is equal to zero. So I needed to calculate more information. Okay, you can see the same equation. You can see the same, but the same. In this situation, I only change it. You see better. This equivalent this. I don't think I did nothing. And uh, you can write this is the same because I, I know a result about that. You can um, you can write the same way that in this calculation here a minute. Please, um, <clears throat> a minute to put this information. This. Look for that, please. Right? It's the same that, right? But I know a result that you have some estimate about this information here. If you have the condition, I put that satisfy this condition in D theorem, then let me see, 8K, and uh, you have that, you have some limitation for this expression. So what this expression said by results and uh, Volkman results, Provide that this expression here, um, one minute to write, okay, the length of the boundary is bigger than two pi. Okay, this is Volkman results because you have this hypothesis. If you have this hypothesis by results, you have this estimate. So you put here now, I will clear this. And uh, what I clean, one minute. So now, if you have the this result here, we have that this result plus, right, two, But you have this estimate here. So you have now four pi, right? And uh, of course, when you talk about same C surface, you consider here that it is no zero, right? So you have that is bigger than four pi. So you have that two minus pi, minus j, sorry, is bigger than one. So you had that J is less than one. So you have that J is equal to zero. All right. So you have that the surface has a uh, um, zero zero. Okay. There are some question. If I if I don't if he, anybody. And uh, loss in some parts, let me know because these are, I think that important to understanding all the, the step here, okay? What's the idea? Idea is the, the, this picture here, or the idea is the picture. You have the surface, 
with some genomes, and uh, you have uh, some components in the boundary, and I uh, use some result that you can see the surface and uh, this application see here in the, in the disk. After the disk, you can see the disk by conformally invariant, conformally to the sphere, up the sphere. And uh, you have that this application here has degree limited by this geometry data. And after that, in the same time, you use the, for example, the gauss bonnet theorem. And uh, of course, these are, these are points. You have that, okay? And after that, if you can prove that in this point here, you only use that, this estimate here, and you conclude the result. I don't prove that the, the boundary has two components at most. It's the same the idea that it was proved by Rosberg after, right? Is there any question here? If you have any question, please let me know. Are you drinking some water? <clears throat> okay, these results, I think this is very beautiful. Um, beautiful result by, by Valdo Nunes, because if you have this result, of course you have a omega is the ball, you have the, the classification that I ask you about, you can remove the third uh, eating the Rosvergast. So if you don't remember Rosvergast, now after, after all the calculation, and uh, I will remember for you one minute, um, one minute to, to remember for you. Hosvergast said you have a ball, stable, compact, and a fee boundary. What's the question? The question is you can remove the letter three here. You can remove that. If you can remove that, you only classify one classification for the surface is that sigma is totally your desk disk or sigma is a is a capital of a sphere, right? So, and uh, after this question, I remember that you, I proved the, the, this result, because I proved the result, because in this case here, omega is the ball, okay? So this, the other result here, here is more general than the first one, right? Is there any question? Please let me know. If don't have any question, I move on. Is there any question? Nothing? Okay. I don't see anybody here. Okay, if he, if he has any question, please let me know. Open your microphone and let me know, right? Okay, I think that don't have question. So let's move on, okay? Okay, the, I think that this, this result is very beautiful, very beautiful for me. Okay, so and uh, let's move on. Okay, I proved these results. Now I begin to talk a little about what's the idea today. Today, as I said before, I'll talk with you about some consequences when I have the, the ball, fee bound, you have hypersurface in the ball, same C, and I want to classify this hypersurface, right? So this result here that you can see, this result here is doing by um, Hosbeth Gaston. So is the following. Let B a ball in the um, equilibrium space, but this space now is dimension n plus one. And uh, this ball here is a closed ball. Suppose that sigma is uh, inside the ball, in mass in the ball, and uh, this hypersurface is a same C, same hypersurface, free boundary, stable with and by the boundary in the ball. Suppose that this hypothesis 
the legacy, I will clean the, the, I will clean that. If you have any question, please let me know. Nothing? Okay. I will clean the, the blackboard to explain, explain better these results. Okay. And uh, remember, when I begin this lecture, I begin this lecture, remember for you, I did this calculation that if you have P bounded, I calculate this. This is the same that this expression plus and uh, this expression. I don't know if you remember that. On the where this function here is this support function. Remember? X, remember? If you have here this condition and uh, this, the hypersoft here is phi bound. Okay, I did this calculation, calculation, and uh, I asked for you. What I asked for you? What condition you have here to put to have that this integral is big or equal to zero, right? So now at this point, I will uh, answer for you this question. So in this result here by Rosberg Gasta, they put it, this condition here, if you have the boundary, the length of the boundary bigger or equal to n, the area, then what they conclude? They conclude that sigma's total geodesic or star shape with respect to the center of the, the ball. I don't know if you remember what does mean star shape, but I remember very fast. Star shape, that means if you have the center, you have the line intersect only one point, okay, on that. I, so what's the next result that you can prove this result by Barbosa, Ezequiel Barbosa from Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais in Brazil. And what they prove? They, they prove that in the case here by um, Rosberg Gasta, you have assumed that you have the assume that the length of the boundary is bigger or equal to any there. So the question is, you can remove that. Okay, Barbosa showed that if you have the same hypothesis that provided by Rosberg Gasta, the hypothesis here you can remove. So this, this, this term here prove that, in fact, they prove more, okay? They prove that if you have the ball in the Euclidean tree space with the mission N plus one, and you have the sigma is a hypersurface in the ball, same C hypersurface, P boundary is stable, then what they prove? They prove that satisfies this inequality here. In particular, you have that always you have this condition here is satisfied. So this condition is here by Rosberg Gast, you can remove it and always you have that. So um, there is a mistake here. And uh, you can all assume that the mean curve two is big or equal to zero. Moreover, they prove that if you have the quality in the left, you have that you classify this hypersurface. The hypersurface is a totally geodesic disk, or the hypersurface is a, a spherical cap. So if you have the quality, you can classify this surface. And uh, in particular, if you have that the boundary is in Biden, okay? you have the same way that the Rosberg Gasta provide. Okay, so now I will show for you how to prove that results, okay? I will prove for you, special, I will prove for you the, the estimate, estimate and the left, okay? So let's move on. 
um, I think that it's important to say here to prove that the length, the length of the boundary is big or equal to any the area. I don't need that the boundary, the boundary of a sigma is in body. I don't need this, okay? So what's the, the motivation here? The motivation here is uh, you can, what's, what I do? I will do here, use some results about the calculation here, about the harmonic functions, about the subharmonic functions, and you can um, show this estimate here, use, for example, Massimo principle, okay? I will do that. So let's move on. Is there any question here? Nothing? Okay, if you don't have a question, I move on. Let's begin. So in this moment here, I need your help because if you have a, any calculation that you see any signal wrong, let me see, please. Okay, bye. Are you clean all the blackboard because I need to calculate. I, I, I need this. And uh, in fact, in, in this, this, this work by Ezequiel Barbosa, he proved more, but uh, I think that important to, to show for, especially for the students. Why I said especially for the students, because uh, I think that important to, to show the student that when you study different geometry, special analog geometric, you have it to use it among other things. Today I, I use it for you and the uh, degree, I use it for you um, Gauss Bonnet, and uh, I use it for you all the things that you study in this week, right? Let's move on. But to prove this result is the same in the idea, is the, the main idea is proved, is using the proposition that I prove um, a few minutes for you provided by Valdo Nunes, right? So to prove this result, I need this, this lemma. This lemma is motivated by results by Nunes. So Nunes stability type, type lemma. I will read for you this lemma and uh, let's go. Uh, Suppose that B is a compact convex domain in the Euclidean tree space with the mission N plus one. And suppose that sigma is a mass stable hypersurface same C with phi bond. If, if you have that this, this function here is uh, infinite, is so that F is equal to zero in the boundary, so you have the this estimate here for the second variation. If you have the the second variation, this calculate for this expression. And uh, moreover, you can ask what happened the quality. The quality occurs if only if the sigma is totally geodesic. Moreover, if you have only you can see, and uh, moreover that if you have that f. Uh, zero and the boundary, you can show that the same. I prove for you a few minutes ago that uh, this Q, FF, the form quadratic satisfies this equality, right? So in this point here, I don't prove the, this, this lemma because uh, I think that important to understand the first lemma that I prove, the lemma doing by Valdo Nunes, and uh, the main idea stay in the result by, by Nunes. Of course, he, you have it more difficult, but the main idea is stay in the Ivaldo Nunes, right? So remember that, that the same way that you use here, this information here is very important for, you, for us. Okay, right? Let's move on. And uh, now I begin to prove these results. And uh, I have a timing. Yes, I have time to prove this because you have some calculation. And uh, I think that's important to, to, to prove that. And uh, what I do? I do 
I don't remember if you if you remember. If you don't remember, don't you worry, because I will remember for you. Don't you worry if you don't remember. I know that there are some information. And um, I will prove, let me see, they left, okay? Okay, remember that this information here, right? This information is important for us, right? If I, I prove, if I prove that, remember, if I prove that this is bigger, we go to zero, you have the hypothesis in, in theorem by doing uh, Rosberg Ast, right? So you have the result Rosberg Ast. So let's move on. So suppose that this, the, now, now you can calculate some information about this function. Why well, this function is important? This function is important because you when calculate, for example, the results by um, Barbosa do Carmo in the first class, I calculate this, this, uh, the Laplace of this function and I have some, some information that is important for us. Okay, right? Let's go. So you have now this function. I begin the proof. And uh, this, pro this function satisfies this equation, this PD equation, right? <clears throat> I think that it's important to, to um, do this calculation to see that it's right. And uh, here on sigma. And uh, what's happened the boundary? Remember, you have a phi boundary. I know I I draw this this ball any times. And uh, you have a sigma and the boundary here. We have that the normal vector, sorry, the normal vector is orthogonal, the conormal vector, but the conormal vector is the same that vector position because you have a phi boundary. So in this case here, you have that U, U satisfies equal to zero on the boundary, right? Okay. So what I can, well, here I have that U is equal to zero on the boundary. If you have it here, that equal u is equal to zero. And the boundary, you remember that the proposition doing by Nunes, and uh, you have here the proposition, one minute. You have here the pro dilemma. Here you have the, these results. So have that, in this case here, remember, this imply that this, Integral is bigger equal to zero, right? Because because u is equal to zero on the boundary. Okay. So what you can more? If you look at that, and if you look at that, what's the relation of this expression? So if you have here this expression and multiply by U, right? So, and integrate this expression. I put here minus because after you integrate minus and uh, this expression. Okay. So, and uh, what you can see here, after you can integrate this, okay? And I use that u is equal to zero on the boundary after integrate is the same that this expression is only integrate. <clears throat> what does mean? That mean that is the same that, so you have that. This expression is bigger or equal to zero, right? In this situation here, only integrate, okay? 
So my question, the first time is, what's the hypothesis that, that you need here to prove that this expression here is bigger or equal to zero? So now I answer for you that if you have that sigma is a stable fee boundary, you have that this expression here is bigger or equal to zero. So what I proved, I proved that <clears throat> One minute. This expression here is um, bigger or equal to zero. So you have that. Remember, if you have that, you have the hypothesis by Hosberg Gast. And uh, if you have the equality, the mean curvature is equal to zero, if only if, and uh, you have that sigma by Hoss Vergasta. Sigma is totally your desk. So you have the first results, right? Let's move on. <clears throat> but if you don't have the mean curvature, is equal to zero. Suppose that the mean curvature is no zero. What I can do, right? If you have that the mean curvature is equal to zero, we know classify this. But I don't know what happens if you have that the mean curvature is no zero. Let's move on. Okay. And uh, now, I, I clear, but I don't don't prove that because the same way that Hosbeth got said is the function u is bigger or equal to zero, or the function u is um, satisfied that on, on sigma. Okay. Why this is important? Because if you have the, this situation, and uh, you, if you have that H no zero, you have that you have a single for the mean curvature. So in this case, you have what happened in this function here, the signal, signal of this function, right? And uh, the idea here, uh, these are provided, was provided by Ross Vergas. So I, I, in this moment, I think that no import um, to prove here, but uh, um, I think that if you want, basically what, you, what they do, they do, they, Take this functionalize the function where is uh, suppose that they change the signal, so we, and uh, they analyze where the function is positive and the function is negative, and they can calculate the second variation. And uh, after some calculation, they shake the right um, contradiction, right? Is if you have the the change of signal, right? So after that, you can suppose so. You can suppose that U is bigger or equal to zero on sigma. And remember that U is equal to equal um, to zero on boundary of sigma, right? Here on boundary is equal to zero, this function. So after that, and uh, you remember, if you have this expression, a minute here, and uh, so if you have here that the mean curvature is, is, is constant, is no zero, you can show that, for example, that eight is bigger than zero, okay? Let's move on. And uh, 
you satisfies the this this equation here, right? So you satisfy this equation or minute here, um, minus u minus. What does mean this equation? Does mean this equation said the Laplacian of u has a single, right? Why? Why? Because you have this. These are bigger or equal to zero. These are bigger or equal to zero. And uh, this with this signal is negative, right? So you have more. <clears throat> what more you have here? And uh, u is equal to zero on the boundary. So now we use what? I use that some principle, um, maximum principle to, to show that this function here, okay, has, and uh, now I use the maximum principle. I, let me see here. For function, subharmonic function, sorry. <clears throat> and uh, what can I conclude? Uh, let me see here. Uh, sorry for my, my simple picture here. You have that the function in the boundary is equal to zero, and you have that the function is negative. So what the um, mass principle said for this? Mass principle said for this that the function on the sigma is positive. So you have that this signal on sigma, right? Okay, any question? If you don't have any question, I, I need to clean the, the blackboard. Okay, <clears throat> now I, I need that the follow exercise. Exercise, suppose that you have this dimension and uh, I need, in the first class I, I said for you that if you have calculated the Laplace of this function is the same that two and eight, this support function plus two n. In fact, when I, in the first in the first class, my n here is two. I don't know if you remember, but my n n here is two. And uh, when I prove the Barbosa do Carmo, I integrate this. This is equal to zero in the case of Barbosa do Carmo because don't have the boundary. And uh, this function is a, a test function, remember? So I need this exercise. This is a good exercise to do. And uh, let's move on. Remember what I can, what I can prove. Let me, let me, to remember, I first I prove that if you have I I prove a little, but I need to prove more. I need to prove that you have this expression here. Okay, what this expression here? I need to calculate that this expression here, right? So what I need? I need to calculate the function u. What my what my claim? Look at that. My claim is that the function u is the same that I put here. One minute. So let's move on that. My claim, my claim, sorry, is that claim. The function u is given by the mean curvature and uh, this expression, okay? If I prove that a put here, of course, you have the result, right? 
I finish the proof, right? So let's move on. How do you prove that? What's the idea? The idea to prove that is use the maximum principle. I use that to prove that, right? Okay. If you don't know if it is, this function is equality, and uh, you give you um, did some modification and uh, prove that the certain function equal to zero. And uh, don't worry, you stay well. Let's move on. Is there any question at the moment? If not, I, I continue. Okay. Remember that. Remember that exercise to prove that. Bye. Okay. And uh, there is some calculation here because I write in big for you to uh, see well. But in fact, um, this uh, is not so big. So to show that is the same, is the same that to prove that u minus is the same that to prove that this expression here is equal to zero, right? It's the same. So let's to prove that this function is equal to zero, right? If I don't know if this function is equal to zero, observe that first, first. If you have this function, I will put here u plus this function. The first observation about that is the following. What's happened to this function in the boundary? In the boundary, what's happened? You have that u is equal to zero in the boundary, in the boundary right? And uh, in the boundary, you have that is equal to zero. So in the boundary, the function f is equal to zero, right? The first observation. Now, if you don't have more observation, what I do? Calculate the, the Laplace of this function, right? Let's go. Laplace of this function, I will calculate one minute because it, um, I mean, I needed to calculate it no fast. Remember, you have here the Laplace of the function u, so you have the expression. Let's go. You put here, remember that the Laplacian is linear, right? So you have that this expression minus NH minus this expression, right? And uh, this is constant, don't worry. This is constant, don't worry. And uh, you have the Laplace of this expression, but the Laplace of this expression is given by this expression here. So you put here u, this function here is called u, right? Plus two n, and uh, you can sim simplify here. And uh, what more? What more? This expression plus this u plus and uh, you can you can simplify a little more right so in this case here you have it, this right square and uh, what more what more are you clean again this <clears throat> one minute And uh, one minute. So this function here satisfies what? Satisfies that. Okay. Only you write here. But I know that I know that this function here 
is bigger or equal to zero, right? And, uh, and uh, this function here, I have uh, the signal. Why I have the signal? Because uh, you have that this expression is always bigger or equal to zero. So this expression here satisfies that. So what does mean? Does mean that this function here satisfies the Laplace of the function satisfies that, right? So you have that the Laplace of this function satisfies that on sigma and the, the function f is equal to zero on boundary, right? Any problem here? Let's move on. If you don't have any problem here, okay, let's continue. Moreover, okay, what you can say more about this expression? Um, if you have this expression here, the quality occurs only if, only if the sigma is umbilical, remember? Okay, the quality here occurs only if the sigma is umbilical. And uh, in this case, if you have the results. So um, I need to, to, to work more to finish the proof. Okay, let's move on. In the first time here, <clears throat> so in this case, if you have that sigma is umbilical, you have that this occurring. So in this case, have the sigma, this is zero. So in this case, have this, the Laplace of the function is equal to zero and uh, the function f is equal to zero in the boundary. So by principle, Laplace, by, for example, um, maximum principle or the other situation can conclude, can conclude that my function satisfies this. Or if you can more, you can conclude that if is equal to zero. So I finished the proof. In this case of the sigma is umbilical, right? So you can um, calculate a little more. And uh, if a sigma is non umbilical, what I can do? I can do that I need more space. So let's move on. <clears throat> and uh, if you have the, in this case, as I said before, the length of the boundary here, you have that this expression, but plus this expression. And uh, if you have that sigma is umbilical, uh, you have that this situation. You satisfy that. So you finish the proof, okay? But uh, now, uh, um, as I said before, I can analyze if you don't have this situation, okay? So um, you have that in, gen in general, you have that you, you prove that. So I don't prove, but I claim uh, U is bigger than equal to zero. And uh, you have that this equality is all true. So what does mean? Does mean that this function, Laplace of this function here satisfies that and uh, when I say before, and uh, this function here is equal to zero on boundary. Again, if you have uh, this situation, what you can conclude? We can, we can conclude at the same I said before, and um, by um, maximum principle for the function subharmonics, right? So let's continue.
in this case, by principle maximum, maximum principle, and uh, you have that the function f is bigger or equal to zero. Or that means it's the same that, remember the function f that I say for you, u plus this function is bigger or equal to zero, right? So <clears throat> um, in this case, what happened? In this case, if you look for this expression, you have the, the inequality because u, u is the same that you can write the same that to write this one minus normal square. So you can write this plus this product, a uh, mean curvature square, and uh, you have that. And uh, okay, right? This is the main idea. But uh, what's happening in the quality? You can prove it in the quality here. You have this situation because you use the maximum principle, and uh, you can prove that if you have the quality. So if you have this here, occur the quality of what's happy. And uh, if you have the quality here, what's happy? is uh, you can show, write, one minute. And uh, I put that, this expression. And uh, you can simplify something here. And uh, you can simplify something here. And uh, you have that. The integral of the function u is the same that you have uh, this, this, this situation here. Okay? But I claim that u is equal, u in this case, if you have the inequality occurring, so you have that u is equal to the mean curvature one minus the normal square. Why this happy? If you don't have this, so you have that, and uh, you have the contradiction with this integral. So you finish the proof, okay? This is the main idea. The main idea here is using, using the maximum principle to show that some function has single, okay? And uh, I know that's uh, big, but the main idea is here of there are, I think that if you have any question, please let me know to explain a little. Okay, so um, the main idea here, let's move on. Is there any question? Not, nothing? Okay, yeah, is there any question? No? Oh, okay, let's move on. So um, this result here, this result here, um, and so the question by, by that, the, the, the um, Rosberg Gasta. And uh, now I show for you the next result about the um, Wang Xia provide that any stable, in math, semi C hypersophy with fee bonded Euclid ball is either a totally geodesic ball or spheric cap. So you have um, another result about that. And uh, these are beautiful results because these are these are results classify all the semi C hypersurface compact, stable, and hypersophy uh, free bonded in the ball. Right. 
So um, I finish here the lecture three, the lecture three, as I said before, I'll talk to you about some fin boundary results in the case of stability. You know here you need some things about to prove that. I use the topology, I use the PDE to prove that. Okay, these results by Nunes and uh, Barbosa, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow, I will see some characterization of the critical catenoid. Okay, these are, um, these, um, I think that is important because there are some conjecture, oh, conjecture about this problem, about this. So I hope that, um, I hope that you stay here tomorrow to see this problem. It may be you can, I hope that you help me to solve this problem, okay? And uh, here, you have some reference about this problem. Basically, I talk today about Barbosa, the first one, and of course they prove more, but I, I put this result that you can see um, a little about these results. Also, I, I talk here for you about Hausvergasta and uh, Nunes. I think that a very beautiful result. Congratulations, Nunes, for this results. And uh, I talk um, about many other results, but I think that that only this is all. And uh, thank for you, thank for your attention. Uh, see you tomorrow. I think that important to to let's go tomorrow here to see all the finish the course. And uh, I see you tomorrow. Thank you. If you have any question. Any comments, please let me know, okay? And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I see you tomorrow. Bye.